Hi there, I'm Rich. One of the questions that gets asked a lot, especially by new woodworkers, is what's the best kind of glue to use for my project? Now maybe that doesn't seem like much of a question to you, but we have so many different types of adhesives that are available to us, it can get pretty confusing. And there, there's no one glue that's the best for everything, so it really depends on what you're doing. So let's take a moment here and let's look at the various different types of adhesives that are available to us and when they would do the most good, when we want to use those, okay? I'm going to start out with high glue. I don't have any high glue here because I basically don't use it. It is the oldest kind of adhesive for woodworking that's existed. It's, it was in use in the 17 and 1800s. And high glue is literally made from rawhide, little cheap chips of rawhide that are melted in hot water and stirred around until they form a glue. And it's a very effective glue. It's a little hard to work with because you do have to heat it up. Uh, although I have to say there is a modern version of high glue made by Titebond that is a liquid form. Now it is not as strong as the original, the, the hot high glue, but it is still high glue and it still works. If you're doing a, a repair job on an old piece or maybe a restoration job on an antique piece of furniture, and you want to stick with high glue, but you don't want to invest in a, a glue pot and all that that goes with doing high glue, that's a usable option, okay? If you buy high glue, the original, you, what you get is a bag of chips and you have to actually mix it yourself. One of the interesting things about this glue, and it's the only glue I know of that this is true of, is that it can be heated to disassemble. All right, so you've got a piece of antique furniture, uh, your great-grandma -grand Tilde's uh, chair, and it's come apart, and you're going to put it back together. You can actually heat the glue joint up and pull it apart, and you can heat it up and put it back together. So that's kind of a neat thing about high glue, which makes it useful for, or, or for us, it makes it uh, convenient, let's say, for repair work, okay? Um, Again, for most of us, that's not our first choice. It's pretty much limited to restoration work. But in that application, it's probably the best thing to go with, okay? The next glue I want to talk about is polyvinyl acetate, commonly referred to as PVA, or a lot of people just say wood glue, or yellow wood glue, okay? This is by far the most common glue in use today for woodworking. It's manufactured by a number of different brands. Uh, Elmer's makes it. Uh, other brands make it. The most common one is Titebond. They're kind of the leader in this particular uh, niche, we might say, okay? Uh, the way PVA works is that it soaks into the grain of the wood. So it makes a very strong bond with the wood and it remains flexible even when it's dry. So that means that it's not going to break loose of the wood very easily. As a matter of fact, if, if a piece of furniture or whatever that's made with PVA glue breaks, it's probably the wood fibers they're breaking and not the glue. It's that strong, okay? Now, some people say you can't use it on end grain. Uh, I've seen testing done where people used it on end grain, and yeah, it still holds, okay? You have to use a little more because of it's soaking in more, but it still works. Um, because it remains flexible, it's not going to be, it's not going to break loose or, or it's not going to crack. The glue itself isn't going to crack from use or from seasonal movement in the wood, you know, as things swell from moisture or whatever. Uh, or, you know, somebody it's too heavy sitting on the table and causing the top to bend a little or something like that, okay? However, it does not adhere to itself. So if you make something with PVA and say you get it just about dry and you break it apart because you realize you did something wrong, or maybe it does break, okay? You've got to clean off the glue and have a fresh wood surface again. Because if you try and repair it just by adding more PVA, it's not going to repair it. It won't be a strong bond. It is not a gap filling glue. There's not a high solids content. So if you have a, a joint with a little bit of a gap and you try and glue it together with PVA, you will get some bonding, but the bonding will actually be the areas that are the closest together. And where there's a real gap, you really won't have anything holding it together. So it's going to be a weak bond. Uh, if you have those sorts of gaps, we have other options to go with, okay? Uh, it doesn't yellow or change color. Of course, it starts out yellow. Um, it doesn't absorb color. In other words, if you have, if you're staining the wood, it doesn't absorb that color. If you are, um, if the wood itself, uh, some types of wood tend to bleed a little bit, bleed a color, it isn't going to absorb that. So it's it's very, it's a good general purpose adhesive. Okay, and it's low cost. It's the most commonly used of any of these adhesives we're talking about. 
Uh, you want to use enough of it so that you get some squeeze out. And what I mean by that is, is you put the two boards together and you get a little squeeze out where the joint is, a little a bit of extra, okay? Spread the glue around so it covers the surface entirely. Uh, clamp it. You should always clamp when you're using PVA glue um, because you want, you want that squeeze out. You want to get as much extra glue and air out of that joint so you have a good solid joint. Now there's two different ways that are used to clean up that excess that squeezes out and the debate rages and has raged for probably years, okay? One is to wipe it off with a damp cloth. Now that'll get off quickly and it'll look nice and clean. And if you're going to paint it, it's not an issue at all. But if you're going to stain and or varnish it, what you'll find is, is that, you're, that where that glue is, the wood won't absorb the stain or it'll show up as a spot with the varnish, okay? So if you're going to do that, you really need to sand the surface there again out around that joint uh, giving yourself fresh wood so that the, the stain and varnish can soak into the wood. The other method is to allow the glue to dry in place and let it be along that edge and then clean it off with a chisel. Now this, this means that there's less surface area on the wood that is affected in any way that might damage uh, the finishing process. And uh, this is the method I use, method a lot of people I know use. Uh, I don't hear a whole a lot of people use the wipe the damp with the damp cloth method, although it is discussed and it is taught to new woodworkers, okay? PVA, as best we know, does not break down over time. It's been in use for, for over half a century and things that were glued together a half century ago are still well glued together, so that's great. It is not really considered a waterproof glue. It's more, well, it depends on the grade, okay? For example, with Type Bond, now they've got three basic grades of their glue. They've got Type Bond 1, 2, and 3. This is 2. Type Bond 1 is not waterproof at all, okay, or water resistant. So if, if you've got it somewhere, say, in a, in a shelf that you made to go behind uh, the sink in your bathroom or something like that, and water gets splashed on it, yeah, it'll probably eventually damage the glue joint, all right? So you only want to use it in places where water is not an issue. Type Bond 2, this one, is considered to be water resistant. And so it can handle that splashing. It can handle maybe the, you know, getting rained on once in a while. But if it's gonna get a lot of rain, you probably don't wanna use it. You probably wanna step up to Type Bond 3, which is referred to as waterproof. Uh, although it's not so waterproof, you can immerse what you've made in water and expect it to survive. But if you make something that's gonna go outside and it's gonna get rained on regularly, Type Bound 3 will handle that, hold up against that sort of abuse very well, okay? Now, as far as the other manufacturers, I'm sorry, I can't tell you about how water resistant their different grades are, or even if they have different grades, uh, that's something you would have to look at uh, if you're gonna use one of those. But consider that when you're making a project, which one's gonna work the most? Now, you might ask the question, why not use, use Type Bond 3 for everything? And some people do. But Type Bond 3 is more expensive than Type Bond 2, which is more expensive than Type Bond 1. So how much glue are you using? You know, if you're using a lot of glue, you may want to have more than one grade of PVA glue around to work with. Okay, the next glue I want to talk about is polyurethane glue, uh, sold under the brand Gorilla Glue. I don't know if anybody else makes a polyurethane or not, but Gorilla Glue is a polyurethane glue. Uh, let me confess to you right now, this is not my favorite glue, and it's really not the glue's fault, it's the people that use it. Okay, um, one of the characteristics of this particular glue is that it expands and you kind of get a foaming coming out of the, the, the joint as the, the glue cures. And I have had way too many pieces of furniture handed to me that somebody tried to repair using polyurethane glue and they put the glue in the joint and they didn't clamp it and the foaming happened and they didn't clean it off and they handed it to me and said, fix it. Okay, that's not the glue's fault. That's the people who did its fault. So, but it, unfortunately, it's kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for dealing with the problems that people cause with it. Should you glue it for that matter? You know, let me just say right now, any adhesive needs clamping. So anything that you're putting together with the glue, figure you're gonna have to clamp it. The question is how long do you clamp it? How tightly do you clamp it, all right? PVA, when I'm clamping something together with PVA, I give it a good 24 hours. Um, poly polyurethane, I probably would use almost as long a time, okay? even epoxy. Most things I'll leave like overnight. That's usually a very typical dry time for me, overnight. But, um, and, and part of that depends on the amount of surface area too. The larger the surface area, 
the more time you've got to get it to cure. Even instant glues like cyanoacrylate, uh, I'll clamp those up and I'll let them sit an hour at least, you know. So, so that's something to consider, okay? Going back to our, our polyurethane here, it has a high moisture, I'm sorry, it does not have a high moisture content, which is beneficial in a couple different ways. Number one, it doesn't soak into the grain of the wood like the PVA does. And what that does, it means is that it's not gonna cause the wood to swell in any way. Now some types of wood will swell more than others, okay? But this isn't gonna cause it to swell because you don't get that soak in. Uh, at the same time, it can be used with woods that have a high moisture content. And normally for woodworking, we look for wood that's down around 10 to 12% moisture content. Polyurethane glue will work with woods that are up to 25% moisture content, okay? Part of that is because it uses the, the, the moisture as a catalyst to cause a chemical reaction so that the, wood will, the glue will cure. So it actually needs some of that moisture. So that's beneficial. That makes it, it useful when you've got, you know, at a time when maybe you couldn't use another adhesive, this is the way to go. It's used a lot of, in furniture repairs, partially because of, of that very reason right there, okay? Um, it can be used with pieces that are already finished, which is very different than PVA. Remember, the PVA soaks into the wood, this doesn't, okay? What that means is if you've got a piece of wood and you've already stained and varnished it, and, and you're attaching some other piece to it, you're, you're, it's gonna adhere the same as if you're just doing it to the wood. Now, there's times when I can really see that it'd be useful because Remember what I talked about with the spotting with the PVA? Well, if you stain and varnish the piece and then assemble it with polyurethane adhesive, you're not gonna get any of that. You know, you're gonna have to clean off the glue that oozes out, that foaming I was talking about, but you're not gonna get that staining because there's the, the glue's not soaking in anyway and, and the, var the varnish is already there. It's already sealed the wood. Now, the question then becomes, how good is the bond between your varnish and the wood, okay? because the glue's strength will be affected. It's, it's the glue's sticking to the varnish, but how well is the varnish sticking to the wood? Generally speaking, it sticks pretty well. But if you tried to varnish on top of, say, an oil-based stain that hasn't dried fully, maybe it didn't adhere all that well, and you're gonna weaken your joint. Something to keep in mind, okay? Uh, again, there's a lot of squeeze out in the form of that foam as the glue cures. That can be sanded off, it can be chiseled off, it can be scraped off, it can be planed off, uh, especially if you do it, like, say, the next day. You let it sit a long time, it gets kind of hard to work with. But, but you can take that off and, uh, and end up with a clean piece. All right? it, it, it'll, it'll do that just fine for you if you take the time to do it. Uh, there's a short clamp time. Uh, I honestly don't know exactly what the clamp time is for this adhesive. I've never really tested what the limits are. I usually go overnight, I'm probably going overkill. You know, I'd rather go overkill on clamp time than underkill because I don't want things coming apart. All right, next glue I want to talk about is cyanoacrylate adhesive. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times referred to in the woodworking community as CA and originally introduced to the marketplace as super glue. We all remember the super glue, right? Super glue is, is not normally thought of as a woodworking glue but in fact, there are times when it is the absolute best glue you could possibly use. Uh, especially times when you can't afford to wait, you know, 24 hours for your PVA to, to dry up, okay? Or times when you've got like, like two blocks that you've got to put together and you've got to line them perfectly. If you try and clamp, if you try and do that with PVA and you clamp it up, it may slide. The pressure from the clamps may cause it to slide because that PVA is a great lubricant, at least until it dries it is. So the fast drying time of the CA adhesive might be a real advantage at times like that. Uh, it works with a wide range, range of materials. You can glue just about anything with it. You know, wood, glass, metal, ceramic, plastic, leather, fabric. Uh, for that matter, backing up a moment, uh, polyurethane works with a wide variety of materials as well. PVA does not, okay? So that's something to consider. What's the material you're working with? But there are, are projects where you may be making something and you've got a brass inlay, okay, that you want to put onto this whatever. Uh, and and uh, uh, trying to, uh, to attach that with PVA isn't going to work. Attaching it with CA is going to work excellent. So there are times when, like that when it's excellent. Uh, another place where you might want to use it is if you're putting together a, a jig or a fixture as a temporary thing and you want to be able to knock it back apart when you're done. 
Now, a typical way a lot of guys do it, that is put together screws so they can unscrew the screws. But maybe screws aren't going to work where you want to do it, okay? One of the unique characteristics of this adhesive is that it's, it's very strong in tension, okay? In other words, I, I glue these two blocks of wood together here and try and pull them apart, and I don't care how much force I, I, I use, it's not coming apart. But it's weak in shear, so I could take these two pieces and I could, say, set this on top of a whatever, on top of the edge of the workbench and hit this one with a hammer, and, and because the, the glue is very brittle when it dries, it'll break that, that joint and it'll come apart. So that's useful in that sort of sense as well. Really, you know, again, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, most CA adhesives are very brittle. There are some that are flexible and they are marketed as flexible CA, but most are uh, rather brittle. Now, we all know that super glue has a fast dry time, you know, measured in seconds, but what if you need something really, really quick, okay? Well, they make an accelerant to use with it this is actually uh, an acetone-based product, and if you were to glue something together with super glue using this, what you would do is you'd spray this on one surface, put your CA glue on the other surface, line them up very carefully, and, and touch them together, and it takes about one second for it to bond. That's it. Done. No clamping required, other than you know pushing it together with your hands. So that's, that's something that's very, very useful if you're trying to do something in a hurry. If you're trying to make a jig or fixture for something you're working on in the shop, you just need to put it together and, and you're in a hurry, use that, okay? Uh, I, I made a clock, um, it was one of the, the solenary projects, and there were three layers of three quarter inch oak to put, that I put together with this clock, and they were four inches square, and the alignment had to be perfect, all right? Well, if I had glued those together with PVA, what would have probably happened is when I clamped them, they would have slid a little bit. Now I've got three pieces that are out of alignment and I've got to plane or sand them to get myself a nice clean edge again. I put it together instead with CA adhesive and, and using accelerant, lined my pieces up absolutely perfectly, put them together, bonded, straight, clean, done. Oh yeah, I started to do the normal standing, but I didn't have to sand, you know, that spot that's sticking out. I didn't have any of that, okay? So there's times like that where CA is an absolute godsend in the way it works. Um, it's, it's very useful for places where you need to do something quickly and neatly and cleanly, all right? Um, of course, keep in mind that it bonds anything, and that means fingers as well, and tools. You can bond your tools right to what you're working on. You can bond your fingers to whatever you're working on. Keep that in mind. You have a very low working time. You want to make sure that if it gets on your fingers, that your fingers aren't stuck to the workpiece. All right? Yeah, that's happened to me. All right? Um, it, it, the reason uh, that one of the things about this is that, like the polyurethane, is that it bonds with moisture. All right? So you've got to have some moisture content. Wood provides that moisture content. But if you're bonding, say, two pieces of glass together, you may not have any moisture content, okay? Um, so there are times when you might end up with uh, needing to use the accelerant just so you have that moisture so that the CA adhesive will work. Um, and then the other thing about it is that you can use it as a finish, okay? Uh, instrument makers, guitar makers do this sometimes where they'll apply a coat of, of CA finish to the outside of a, a say, a guitar body. Uh, that they're trying to, to build and allow it to dry and then it buffs to a really high gloss. Uh, it's a little tricky to do that because the, the, it takes a fair amount of, it, of CA to do it and it dries quickly but you can get a beautiful, beautiful finish with it. And finally, the last thing I want to mention about it is that it's absolutely the best glue to use when you've got to do a, a, like a repair to a piece of furniture where you've got a chip that's broken out or something like that. You know, a long splinter that's broken out and you've got to get it back right in, in the spot. You know, make sure it'll fit right before you apply the glue, but that's the best glue to get that right in the way it originally was. And you can probably glue it, you know, assuming it's a fairly fr fresh break, you can probably glue it well enough that nobody will be able to see it when you're done. Okay, let's talk about epoxy. Now, epoxy is my favorite adhesive, although I'll have to say I really don't use it on woodworking that much just because of the cost, okay? A lot of people don't like using epoxy because it's a two-part adhesive. You have to mix it together and then apply it to whatever you're working on. I get it, that's a hassle. It's a whole lot easier to grab your, your bottle of, of PVA glue and put it together, or even your polyurethane glue and put it together than do it with epoxy. 
But epoxy has some benefits that no other adhesive I've got here can provide for you. First of all, it's waterproof. It's 100% waterproof. You can put something together with epoxy, submerge it underwater, and leave it there for the next 50 years. The wood will rot away, but the glue will stay, okay? The second thing that's very, very unique about this adhesive is that it's a high solids adhesive. It doesn't shrink a lot, and it, because of that, it can be used for gap filling. If you have a, a, a crack in a piece of wood and you need to fill that crack, uh, you can use it with, with, uh, with epoxy. Or if you make, say, your very first dovetail box together, you know, you're, and your dovetail joints aren't that tight, and you've got some cracks, but you still want to finish putting it together, you can use epoxy, okay? Anywhere where you have a crack. Wood turners use epoxy with uh, mica dust mixed into it to fill cracks that form in, in logs so that they can still turn that log. And uh, it, it ends up beautiful. You can, you, you can get mica dust in a variety of different colors and you get this almost metallic, sparkly, swirly sort of a finish in there. It's also used by woodworkers that make like, um, what are known as live edge or river countertops, and you've got that river flowing down the middle, that's poured epoxy. And they'll either use a dye or they use the mica, depends on, on who's doing it and what look they're trying to get. And they'll fill that up. And, and even though you've got a, a, a gap that's six inches wide there, the glue, the glue fills it up and cures and you have a good solid bond, okay? So that's one of the real benefits of working with epoxy. Now, I don't use it all the time. I wouldn't use all the time, but there are times when it is the ideal adhesive to use. Now, different epoxies have different cure times, or really it's more of a working time. This particular set is five minutes. That means you got five minutes from the time you mix it to finish using it and have everything the way you want it, or you're not gonna get it the way you want it, <laughs> okay? Now, it doesn't mean it's cured in that amount of time. You actually need to still clamp it and let it sit for several hours. Uh, for it to fully cure. It's a chemical cure as opposed to an evaporation cure. So it's not drying, it's actually a chemical reaction. Um, but cl clamping it together is still useful. Uh, granted, you know, you'll probably get some squeeze out when you do that and you'll have to clean that off. Um, and, and you don't want to clamp to the point where you eliminate gaps that you're trying to use the glue to, to, to bridge. But nevertheless, you can still do it, okay? One thing to watch out for is that moisture in the materials being glued can adversely affect the ability of the epoxy to adhere to the surface. So if, if you have wood with high moisture content, this is not the adhesive you want to use. You probably want to use the polyurethane, okay? So that's a limited, limiting factor on it. There are marine grades of epoxy that handle moisture better uh, as far as gluing it, but still they're really intended to be used gluing something together when it's one, it's dry, and then putting it in the moisture. Okay, those four are the major adhesives that we use in woodworking, and, and most people don't actually use all of them, okay? There's two more I wanna to talk to you about because they are useful under certain circumstances. The first of those is contact cement. Now, contact cement can be buy it, bought in like a can or jar with a brush to brush it on, or it can be bought in a spray. Contact adhesive is really only used in one place in woodworking, and that's veneering. If you need to attach veneer to, say, a tabletop, contact adhesive is the way to go, okay? Uh, there are some, some tricky things about working with contact cement. You spray it or brush it on the surfaces, and then you need to allow it to attack, and you have to do it on both surfaces. Uh, if you just brush it on one surface and then put them together, it could very easily come apart on you because it never really bonded to the other surface. Uh, but you brush it on both surfaces, allow them to attack, and then you put them together. Now, here's the problem. As soon as that contact adhesive on one surface makes contact with the contact adhesive on the other surface, that's it. It's there forever, okay? It will not come apart. I guess that's where the name contact adhesive comes from. Um, all right, so how do you deal with that? All right, let's say we're trying to veneer a tabletop and we're using contact cement to do so. Well, you spray it on both surfaces and allow it to tack. And then you take dowel rods and, and put dowel rods on the tabletop, say every six inches apart. And, uh, and then it allows you to, to lay the veneer onto the tabletop, adhesive side down, right? We've got adhesive side, adhesive side, but it's like that veneer is floating. It's about a half inch, let's say. We're using half inch dowel rods, a half inch above the contact cement on the table. So we can adjust the position, get it where we want, and then stick it down. Now, whenever you're doing this, you want to cut your veneer a little oversized so that um, if you mess up a little bit, 
you got a little bit to play with, okay? So, okay, once we get it lined up, then we start working from the middle outward, pressing it down with your hand, with a roller, there's different ways you can do it. And then gradually moving those, those dowel rods, either shoving them sideways or just pulling them out and working your way. You could say work from the middle, get the middle down, pull out the, the, the very first dowel rod on this side, get that down, then the next one, work your way, the, way to that end and do the same thing to the other end. Once it's all down and, and you've, you've rubbed it across, uh, again with your roller or maybe a, a pad of cloth or something like that, uh, then you would take a trim router with a flush cut bit and you go around the edges and make your edges nice and clean. That's the way it's used. It is the best adhesive for that. Now I've, I've also laminated on veneer using PVA. It's a lot harder, okay? This may be a nuisance to work with to some people, but it is the best product for that particular application. And that's really the only application. And then the last adhesive I want to talk to you about is the glue gun. Now I, I realize this isn't really normally considered something for woodworking. It's really for crafts, okay? But there are times when a glue gun can be useful. Now, obviously not to bond two pieces of wood together. Uh, you know, you're making a, a piece of furniture and you bond, or you knickknack for your house and you bond it together. You know, it'll come apart. Yeah, not only that, but you'll never get it squeezed down to the point where it's wood to wood contact. You're always gonna have a gap there. It's just not designed for that type of thing, okay? But the fact that it doesn't stick well to the surface is beneficial when we're using it for jigs and fixtures. Let's say you need to uh, you're, you're trying to glue something together, some project together, you've got a curved surface here, you got to put a clamp on that. Well, you try and put your bar clamp across there and that clamp's going to slip, okay? So you cut, you take a piece, you take your scrap from where you cut that off, you put it up there and you clamp it. Well, maybe you got to glue that in place uh, temporarily so that you can get your clamp on there, okay? You don't have enough hands, you don't have four hands, you don't have two. Well. Okay, glue, glue it in place with a glue gun. Now, it doesn't mean glue the entire surface. That means maybe a little glue on the ends or on a couple of the edges, just enough to hold it in place. Once your glue is, the rest of your gluing is set, you can break off that piece and just peel off the glue. Okay, the, it works that way. Uh, another place you might do that is if you're running something, a small piece or several small pieces through a planer. Well, if you're running small pieces through a planer, you're probably going to lose the pieces. You're better off attaching them to a sled, which is just a big board, uh, and, and you can put them on there and uh, put a few spots of glue, say, in the corners to hold it down. Do your planing. Again, you can pop it loose, peel off the glue. Um, if you're using a planer to take the twist out of a board, okay, and, and uh, and you need to glue the, that board to, to a sled, again, the hot milk glue gun is what's used for that. So although it isn't really something for making your project or finishing your project or assembling your project, it is something that's a useful tool and a useful adhesive in the workshop for some of the things that we need to do. So we've got a variety of different glues available to us. Uh, each of them has its own strengths and its own weaknesses, and each of them has certain applications which they're the ideal glue for. You know, I probably use PVA glue more than I do anything else, but I use a lot of epoxy for a lot of other things. Uh, I do some furniture repair where CA is the thing to go with. So it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, all of them have their place. I, I have all of them in my shop. The only thing I don't have here is the, the high glue. I have all these because I use them all, okay? Um, it just really depends on what you're working on. So uh, f learn which glues are going to work best for you and work with them enough so that you're comfortable working with them. So when it's time to use it on a project, you know exactly what you're going to do and exactly how it's going to work for you.